current recession, sales of new cars are booming again. And with the launch of two new cars this month alone, for now at least, we don't seem to care that cars could quite literally be the death of us. Next week, reportage comes from America. A year after the LA riots, are we seeing the death of the American dream? Judge. Oh, I say. They're going to milk this moment, and rightly so. Wow. The best football show on the telly is back. Yes, standing room only, the thinking fan's guide to football. Once again, we'll be tackling the issues that really matter. Staggering prices, stupendous action, stodgy pasties, and anything else that begins with stuff. And I'll be doing rounds of the grounds to bring you all the dressing room gossip, and not just from old Big Ed at Forest. As usual, the big stars have been queuing up to get on the show. So, whether you support Stockport County, Stoya Bucharest, Stirling Albion, standing room only is the only problem. Well, we interrupt normal programming to bring you some shock football news just in. Studs, the cartoon legend and star of TV Standing Room Only, is to quit the English game and move to Italy. Well, the news couldn't have come at a worse time for the football fans' own programme. A new series is imminent. As ever, Ron Motson has all the details. Uh, well, Raymond, the sensational news came at a press conference just a few minutes ago. Studs has quit Standing Room Only to sign a lucrative deal with the programme's Italian equivalent, Standingo Rumo Onlyo. The show is top of the ratings in Italy and Studs feels he needs a new platform on which to display his many talents. Though the opportunity to work with a new presenter also had some appeal, I fancy. Studs is planning to take his friend Jimmy Five Chins with him to help him adjust to the new lifestyle. Let's go live to see how Studs' standing room only colleagues have taken the news. We can hear from Kevin Allen, I think. Gone to Italy? Well, come to think of it, he was, yeah, he was looking badly drawn, yeah. And those Italian restaurants we kept going to. All the pasta, of course, it's all making so No, I can't. God, what memories, what a great guy, yeah. He was such a great cartoon He was pro. fantastic. He used to come into the office, I remember this one time. He came into the office and farted very, very loudly, and we all laughed. What a my kind of guy. Do you remember? <laughs> and it was, God, he'll be sorely missed. The move brings down the curtain on a brilliant domestic career. As the face of standing room only for three glorious seasons, Studs was the voice of the terraces. Oh, Alright then, boys and girls, the boy Studs here with all the latest news and a chance for you, the fans, to air your views on the beautiful game of football. Studs made his debut on the 16th of September 1991, and his unorthodox approach was an immediate success. All the top names flocked to appear on the programme. Oh, yes! whole school, the girls start to call Pelé, Pelé, to tease me. And then I get the nickname Pelé, but uh, nobody knows why. <laughs> Karen Collins, as hell that was, comes the best. And it's there. Beautiful. Absolutely. I basically played for one of the greatest club sides of all time. The same as I'd played when I was a kid, kicking a ball around the, the, the schoolyard in, in Belfast. You know, nobody told me how to play. I did it off the cuff, naturally. Gets a touch. Pullets there! Yes! Holland 1-0! Rudy Hollett! The best example for every country is the way that they play in England. And it starts a goal! 
People just don't appreciate cartoon characters in this country. I mean, look what they did to Roy the Rovers. After all he'd done for the game, I knew then it was time to move on. As the nation no one did more to advance cartoon culture than the studs. Humorous line drawings have been a regular feature on standing room. I wish to announce the following changes. A new Chancellor of the Exchequer. Oh, yes. A new Chancellor of the Exchequer with a safe pair of hands, Mr. David Besant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. <laughs> Not um, that's E-R-M, Dave, right? But Sturge's career has been steeped in controversy. The authorities always took exception to his subversive humour and close association with alternative comedians. With studs at the helm of standing room only, no one was safe from satirical attack. I'm being poor. Money, money, money. Jeff Thomas's miss against France. Good running by Jeff Thomas on this side. Brilliant running. And he's through. Can he finish? The fact is, gentlemen, that whatever the commission says, it is simply not scientifically possible for a ball to leave an international player's boot here and then end up Here. Then there were the women. Sensationally, he was romantically linked with journalist and co-presenter Shelley Webb, wife of England star Neil. Yes, obviously there were rumours we were having an affair, but it was purely professional. I mean, he's just not my type. I'm more a Dennis the Menace woman. But admirers were quick to point out that his programmes never shied away from the big issues in the game. Drugs, finances and violence were all confronted head on. Dynamo Dresden carried off the East German League title and cup at regular intervals before the wall came down, but football is paying the price of freedom in the form of serious trouble on the terrace. The standing room only can reveal the secret of the great drugs mystery. They're the sports council dope testers and they have the power to ruin a footballer's career and turn it into his worst nightmare. First thing the clubs will say is, well, well there'll have to be a reduction in, in salaries. I'm quite prepared to take a big reduction in salary. Ideally, yeah, I would like to get down to 16 clubs, three clubs, and we'll try one cup person. So what now for the standing room only team? Well, when a new series gets underway on April the 19th, they'll be without the cartoon superstar of soccer. One thing we can reveal is standing room only's new secret weapon, the supporter loop. The mobile toilet has already paid a visit to football grounds across the country, inviting fans to let off steam about their favorite sport. And it'll be at a football ground near you in the coming weeks. All seated stadia, no. these days when they're trying to encourage more families to come to football matches that their ladies toilet facilities should be a lot better why is it that the referees seem to be getting away with making bad decisions week after week and they've never ever been suspended or anything any comeback on them at all thank you whatever happens to studs in italy Standing Room Only will continue to give a platform to the ordinary football supporter here in Britain. So if you think there's an issue the programme should be looking at, call 0345 045 045. That's 0345 045 045, if I'm not much mistaken. A sensational story there. And just to recap, for those of you just coming in, Standing Room Only is back, BBC Two, April the 19th, 6.50. Don't miss it. <laughs> Documentary. Oh, Channel 8.
you've done right is you're unsigned only, just send in a video clip, preferably a home video, no professional stuff, okay? Quality does not really matter. For dance week only. <laughs> I'm going to have a baby. With a snapper on the way for Sharon, life in Barrytown may never be the same again. So, Sharon, who are you having it for? I can't tell, sorry. J just tell us! I can't! Why not? I just can't, right? What, is he married? No, he's not! The slut! That's shocking. Let's see her get into those jeans now. From the writer of The Commitments and directed by Stephen Frears. The Snapper, Sunday at 10 on BBC Two. Are you all right, Sharon? Are you all right, Sharon? In half an hour in Bookmark, the British poet Simon Armitage will be looking for Robinson, and indeed Robinson's creator, the American poet Weldon Keyes, who apparently disappeared off the Golden Gate Bridge in 1955. BBC Two now examines the work of an RAF medical team who help British hostages like Terry Waite and who've pioneered the treatment of people who've suffered severe stress and near-death experiences. November 1991 and Terry Waite, like John McCarthy and Jackie Mann before him, sets foot on British soil. After five years in captivity, RAF Lynham becomes home as he undergoes a two-week debriefing. A year later, he returns to Lynham to talk for the first time about that debriefing and meet the team who helped his return to normality. That team are based at the RAF's International Psychiatric Centre at Rawton, ten miles away. Their work with the British hostages is only part of the story. Here they've devised a unique program to help those who suffer from post-traumatic stress. A clinical research project is underway that could have far-reaching effects in the care of military personnel who are sent to war zones. The team will help this group recover from their disturbing experiences, ordinary people who found themselves in extraordinary circumstances.